$1.87. That was all. Della counted it three times. $1.87. And the next day would be Christmas. O. Henry was an American author who was celebrated for his wit, humor, and captivating storytelling. We will explore O. Henry's life through his relationships, his various jobs, and the places he lived, all of which influenced his stories. William Sidney Porter, who adopted the pseudonym O. Henry, was born September 11, 1862, along Polecat Creek, North Carolina, into a middle-class family. His mother and a brother passed away from tuberculosis when he was three. His father, Dr. Algernon Sidney Porter, then moved the family to live with William's grandmother in Greensboro. The loss of his mother profoundly affected him and shaped his writings, which often explored themes of loss and loneliness. Between 1867 and 1876, Porter's Aunt Lena taught him privately, helping him develop his storytelling, writing, and drawing skills. He apprenticed with his uncle at the W.C. Porter Company drugstore in Greensboro and became a licensed pharmacist. He was only 19. While working at the drugstore, he fell in love with Sarah Lindsay Coleman, but was too shy to ask her out. Hoping to alleviate a persistent cough, in early 1882, Porter left his family and North Carolina behind and headed to Texas with James K. Hall. Porter lived on a ranch in LaSalle County, owned by James Hall's son, Richard, where he worked as a ranch hand. In 1884, Porter visited Austin and decided to stay. He worked briefly in several jobs, including for the Morley Brothers Drug Company as a pharmacist and for the Harold Cigar Store located in the Driscoll Hotel. He also wrote in his spare time. Porter led an active social life in Austin. He was witty, told stories, and played guitar and mandolin. He also performed with the Hill City Quartet, a quartet who sang for gatherings and serenaded young Austin women. Porter met Athol Estes from a wealthy Austin family, and they began dating. The young couple eloped in July 1887 and were married in Reverend R. K. Smoot's house, pastor of the Central Presbyterian Church. Encouraged by his new wife, Porter became more serious about his writing. Richard Hall was elected Texas Land Commissioner in 1887 and hired Porter as a draftsman. The land office offered a trove of characters to incorporate into his stories like Georgia's ruling and buried treasure. Porter took a position as a bank teller and bookkeeper at First National Bank of Austin. Apparently, the managers were corrupt, bookkeeping was shoddy, and Porter was a careless record keeper. The bank was audited. While at the bank, Porter started a humorous weekly called Rolling Stone which featured satirical stories about people and politics and provided a vehicle for Porter's writings to be published. Although the publication failed, Porter's stories caught the attention of the editor at the Houston Post, who hired him. During Porter's time in Houston, federal authorities audited the bank again and discovered financial misdeeds. Porter was indicted on embezzlement charges and arrested. His trial was to start July 7, 1896, but, scared of what might happen, the day before his trial began, he fled to New Orleans, then on to Honduras. He stayed there for about six months. Athol, who was still in Austin with their daughter Margaret, was too ill to join Porter, so he returned in February 1897 to be with his family and to face charges. Sadly, Athol died from tuberculosis just a few months later. Porter was tried and found guilty and sentenced to five years in the Ohio Penitentiary. Porter worked in the prison hospital and served as night pharmacist, which gave him time to write and earn money to support Margaret. Fourteen of his stories were published. By then, he had fully embraced his writer identity, O. Henry. Porter was released for good behavior July 24, 1901, and reunited with Margaret, who was then living in Pittsburgh with Athol's parents. 
Porter's most prolific writing period began when he moved to New York in 1902. His stories captured the essence of urban life and reflected the city's diverse inhabitants and their struggles, dreams, and desires. Although his writing was sometimes disparaged by critics, his devoted readers relished his tales that featured kind, selfless characters and ironic last-minute plot twists. These surprise endings came to be known as the O. Henry Twist. Some of his most notable stories during this period were The Ransom of Red Chief, The Last Leaf, and The Gift of the Magi. In the book Time to Write, O. Henry authority Judge Truman E. O'Quinn observes that the gift of the Magi may have been inspired by an episode in Porter's own marriage. Porter and Athol had saved spare change so she could travel to the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. Athol's love for her home and family outweighed her desire to take the trip, so instead she bought curtains and wicker chairs to dress up their home. In New York, Porter reconnected with his childhood friend, Sarah Coleman. Their rekindled friendship became an engagement and then marriage on November 27, 1907. His failing health caused Sarah to move him to a family cottage in Weaverville, a small town near Asheville. For Porter, the small town environment wasn't conducive to writing. He missed the energy of New York that had inspired him. Even an office in downtown Asheville didn't help, so they returned to New York. Although he was still writing, his deteriorating health contributed to a decline in his work. Porter died June 5, 1910, at age 48 of diabetes and possibly of alcohol-related diseases. After the funeral, Sarah returned him to Asheville to be buried in Riverside Cemetery. Margaret is buried alongside. Fans often visit Riverside Cemetery and leave $1.87 at his grave. O. Henry is honored in several locations a historical marker at 130 Summit Avenue in Greensboro denotes Porter's family home. A historical marker at 409 East 5th Street, Austin, denotes Porter's and Athol's residence, now the O. Henry Museum. A historical marker at 55 Irving Place denotes Porter's New York residence. The city of Asheville named a prominent downtown street in his honor, O. Henry Avenue. There is also a plaque on Patton Avenue near the downtown location of his office. <music>